Every human being on earth is attracted to music of some sort. If that were not the case, something is really wrong with that person. So it is the same case with strength or power. Every human being is attracted towards strength and power of some kind. Every human being wants to associate himself or herself with this strength or this power. Strength or power is defined as the degree of being strong. It is the capability of being able to achieve. It is the potential that resides within the person, either physically, mentally, emotionally, to be able to achieve certain things in this lifetime. Many companies have associated themselves with this term strength or power or energy, right from the oil making industry into the cement making industry, right from the shoe business into the car business industry, right from the power generator industry into the social media, the power of picture. All of these companies associate themselves with the term power for the simple reason that it is attractive. It is attractive to human beings. Human beings are attracted towards strength and power and energy. Strength is attractive because it covers a lot of our weaknesses. It hides away our vulnerabilities. It tucks away the blind spots in our lives. It keeps away weaknesses under the carpet. When you look at a strong man who seems to be strong outwardly, you tend to think that he's inwardly strong. Well, this person may have vulnerabilities, but because of his strength, he presents himself to be strong on the outside. We imagine that he must be strong emotionally, he must be strong intellectually, but that's the insight or the inward of a person that we can't judge. But what we can judge is the strength that he portrays on the outside. So strength is attractive because it hides away our weaknesses. Strength is attractive because it is firm. Some have said the sea will roll away, but the rocks remain. Strength is like a rock, it remains. And when you look at a person who is strong in character, strong emotionally, that person seems to be strong, that person seems to be solid like a rock, unmoved in any ways. And that kind of a person is attractive. Also, strength is attractive because Strength is associated with timidity. I can tell you for sure, none of us would like to associate ourselves with a timid person. We would always like to associate ourselves with a bold person, a bold character, a powerful person, because we are attracted towards such people. So that is why we are attracted towards strength and power and energy because it is attractive. But I want to share with you a secret today from the Apostle Paul's life. The Apostle Paul's life is a very exemplary life. If you look at his life, you will understand that he went all out and did what God has asked him to do. Ever since that encounter he had with Christ, that conversion he had, and on his way to Damascus to persecute the Christians there. But when God met with him, there was a turnaround in his life and he submits himself to the call of God. And from that point on, he went on and did great things for God. Bible scholars have confirmed to us that Paul wasn't a well-built person. He does not have the physical structure as such. He doesn't have the physical stature where people would say that he was muscularly built. But Paul had something very unique in him. He had the power of God 
dwelt in him. He had such power and strength and energy that you and I today would love to be associated with this person that Christ has chosen and used so mightily. We would be proud to be associated with the Apostle Paul because of what he has contributed to the body of Christ or because of what he has achieved in his lifetime. He had so much power and strength. And the Apostle Paul describes about this strength. He describes about this power that he has in him. Today, my friends, if you look at this person, the Apostle Paul, you will see that the Apostle Paul was such a great person that God have used. He wrote 14 books of the New Testament. More than half the, the books of the New Testament was written by the Apostle Paul. He planted more than 14 churches. He did signs and wonders and miracles. Traveled, bared so much for the sake of the, of the gospel. He was uniquely gifted and he talks about this power. He wrote in his letter to the, to the Philippians, chapter 4, verse 13. He says, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. He talks about the strength. The Apostle Paul talks about the inner strength, the power. And he talks about the strength that comes through Christ. And I call this as the sea link or the Christ link. If you and I would understand the secret of Paul's strength and power, we would do well, my friends, today. We would be able to do exactly what the Apostle Paul did. In fact, more than what the Apostle Paul did, because we have found this inner strength that does not lie on us, but lies on Christ himself. The Apostle Paul's strength did not come from his wisdom. He regarded wisdom as nothing, in fact. The Apostle Paul's strength did not come from his power to be able to achieve. He didn't come from his potential. The Apostle Paul's strength did not come from his intellect, although he was a learned person, but he counted the intellect as nothing. The Apostle Paul's strength did not come from his wealth, although he had come from a wealthy family. The Apostle Paul's strength did not come from his ability, from his goodness. It did not come from his holiness and so on and so forth. You see, the Apostle Paul's strength comes from Christ. That's what he said. It comes from Christ who strengthens him. Christ who is indwelt in him strengthens him. Now, Christ has basically three definitive strengths here. We will look at each of these. Number one, the definitive declaration of Christ is given to us, or rather it is accounted to us by John the Apostle. In John chapter 5 verse 19, it says like this, I can guarantee this truth, he says, the son cannot do anything on his own. He can only do what he sees the father doing. Indeed, the son does exactly what the father does. So John accounted what Jesus spoke that Jesus could not do anything on his own, but he can only do what he sees his father does. My five-year-old daughter would come to me at times, and when she sees me on my phone, she would run towards the room, picked up her tablet, and began to play with it. But there were times when she sees me reading a book. She would do the same thing. She would go pick the book, her own storybook and begin to read her storybook. She imitated what I would do. Jesus imitated the Father. He does what the Father does. Now the strength that Christ has is in his ability to see what the Father does. Now think about you and me today. Where does our strength come from? As followers of Christ, if our strength does not come from Christ, then it must come from somewhere. And then somewhere could be myself, it could be a person that I trust, it could be a source from somewhere where I draw my strength from. But if you look at Paul, Paul says, my strength comes from Christ. And Christ declared, that his confidence 
in doing what he was able to do comes from that ability to see what the Father does. And so if you and I today were to go in strength and power and achieve great things for God, we must draw our strength from Christ. And our strength comes from Christ as we look at what the Father does. The Father does and continues to do things today in this world. And if we would only open our eyes and begin to see what the Father does, we would be able to have so much confidence in doing what we are called to do. The Father continues to heal people today. The Father continues to feed and reach out to the poor and the needy. The Father continues to provide. The Father continues to help the people who are in need. The Father continues to use people today. Well, if you and I were to look at what the Father does, we would have so much confidence in doing all of these things that the Father are doing, is doing. So our strength in doing what God has called us to do is to be able to see what the Father does in our world today. Secondly, Christ's definitive strength comes from His definitive indwelling. Christ, when He was baptized in the River Jordan, we all remember that, the heavens opened and a dove from above came and resided upon Christ as a symbol of the Holy Spirit who had come to indwell in Christ. And this indwelling of the Holy Spirit in Christ gave him the power and the strength to carry on. Because Christ relied upon the Holy Spirit's power to be able to do what he was asked to do on this earth. That is to carry out his mission until the time he was put on that cross. And even the resurrection of the dead is raised by that same spirit, the spirit of resurrection. You see, you and I today, if we are to go out in strength and power, we must have this indwelt Holy Spirit. I read to you from Romans chapter 8 verse 9. But if God's spirit lives in you, you are under the control of your spiritual nature, not your corrupt nature. Whoever doesn't have the spirit of Christ doesn't belong to him. So if you have or if I have the spirit of Christ, we are controlled by the spiritual nature. We are no longer controlled by the corrupt nature. We're no longer controlled by the sinful nature. But we are controlled by the spiritual nature if we have the spirit of Christ in us. And it goes on to say that if the spirit of Christ doesn't dwell in us, we don't belong to Christ. You see, there are many people who say, who thinks that they know Christ. And they know Christ out of their head knowledge. They know Christ because they've read about him. Maybe through the Bible. But they have not experienced Christ. And they've not experienced the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in their life. And because of that, the Bible is very clear that if the Holy Spirit does not indwell in you, you don't have anything to do with Christ. You are not part of Christ. You don't belong to Him. And so this same Spirit that resides in Christ is and can reside in us today to provide us the strength and the power to be able to do what God has asked us to do in our lifetime. And the third definitive strength of Christ is his definitive in enabling. John chapter 15 verse 5 says like this, and these are very short sayings of Christ. He's, Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. This Jesus was talking in description about the vine and the branches. And Jesus says, without me, you cannot do anything. Now, Jesus made this very clear in this very short sentence that you cannot do anything without me. You see, our strength really relies on Christ. Without him, we can't do anything. We are the branches. And as a branch, we've got to be connected to the trunk, the vine. And without being connected to the trunk, we will die. Hudson Taylor, in his missionary uh, life, he thought that he was trusting God that God would provide all of his needs, and he was doing very well. But there was this dissatisfaction that he had. There was no joy in him. There were no breakthroughs. There were no liberty in his ministry. It was not until a time when one of his friends wrote to him a letter, and in his letter, this is what, this is what he mentioned. 
He says, it is not by trusting my own faithfulness, but by looking away to the faithful one. Now, this one sentence changed the life of Hudson Taylor. And he began to look up to the faithful one, look up to God and begin to rest upon him and begin to draw strength from him every single day of his life. You see, sometimes we can fool ourselves by thinking that we trust in God. But then if we look at our life carefully, we will understand that there is dissatisfaction that's happening in our life. It's because we have not learned to trust in God fully. And we have not learned to draw strength from Him. And so the enabling power of Christ is available, but we must stay connected to that vine. You see, our strength is insufficient because our strength is temporary. It is not permanent. It can go high at one time and then low at another time. It fluctuates, but the power and strength of Christ remains. It continues to energize and empower us to do what God has called us to do. Our strength is insufficient because it deprives salvation through Christ. Our strength depends on our own. But the death of Christ on the cross has provided salvation to all humanity. If we only draw our strength from that cross, we would do well to live this Christian life. Our strength is insufficient because it brags about its capabilities. It's prideful. Our strength is insufficient because it fails on promises. It fails at the times when we intend to do good we would succumb to our sinful nature. Our strength can fail. Our strength is insufficient because it experiences setbacks. When we try to do the best, when we've planned everything, and yet nothing happens and nothing falls in place and we can face setbacks. And so our strength is not a kind of strength that we need to depend on. It is the kind of strength that the Apostle Paul describes, which comes through Christ that we need to rely upon. The strength that comes from Christ. Are you connected to this Christ today? Do you have your connection with Him today? If you don't have your connection today, you might be losing something. You might be depending on somebody else's strength. You might be depending on some sources. You might even be depending upon your own strength, which is not really a good place to rely upon, which is really not a place where you can put your life upon. It is only through the strength of Christ that you can achieve what God has asked you to achieve in this lifetime. And I would encourage you today to begin to seek for that strength that comes through Christ that the Apostle Paul himself describes here, that my strength, my strength only comes through Christ and through Christ alone. And so I would invite you today that you would Connect yourself with Christ because Christ's strength is efficient enough. He has overcome the world. And when Jesus has overcome, has overcome the world, it means that Jesus has everything that he has got to offer to us so that we can achieve what God has asked us to do in this lifetime. Can I pray with you as we close? Dear Lord, I pray today that you would help us, help each of us today, and especially those watching and listening today, Lord, who have not connected themselves to you, who haven't got linked themselves to you. Through the cross, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ, that they would come to seek you and seek that divine connection with you today, that they will be empowered to do what you've asked, us, asked them to do, Lord. And so, Father, we pray that even as you do to each one of them, you do to us also. Those of us who have thought we have connected with you, Lord, that we will begin to introspect into our own lives and reconnect ourselves back to you. Because as you said, that without you, we can do nothing. And so, Lord, reconnect us back to you. 
We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.